Welcome to the Little Street Pottery Research Facility. Here, our scientists take on pottery's most perplexing problems so that we can provide you critical research results. Today, we're experimenting with mason stains to make colored slips. Mason stains are used for tinting ceramic glazes, slips, and clays. Using various mason stains, we'll investigate how they react when mixed with clay and under clear glaze. Step one, I need to make the slip. Fortunately, I had a bag of dried out reclaimed clay I've been wanting to get rid of. I need the clay to be in small enough chunks so that I can weigh individual ingredients for little 200 gram batches. I took it outside and put it in a pillowcase. Then I put all of that in a plastic trash bag. I folded the top of the pillowcase securely to eliminate a dust cloud, then began pounding it into finer particles. Here I'm using a cinder block to break the clay into even finer particles. Now on to our experiment. We're always safe at the research lab. I made six batches of colored slips. I measured out 200 grams of the dried clay for each one. Our first two batches used Mason Stain 6319 Lavender. In the first batch, we used 10% of the stain. In the second batch, I only used 5% to see what the differences might be. For the third and fourth batches, I used number 6223 Ivy Mason Stain. Again, I added 10% of the stain to one batch and 5% to the other batch. The fifth and sixth batches were made with Mason Stain number 6006 Deep Crimson. I wanted to include a red stain because red is notorious for fading in the high fire. Let's see how it does. Again, for consistency, we'll follow the same percentages as the other four batches. I didn't worry about starting with bigger chunks of clay. The clay will quickly slake down with a little bit of water. We timed the separate batch of clay and water and found that in 20 minutes it had dissolved enough that we could use a hand mixer on it. I added 3 quarter cups of water to separate cups and then slowly added the ingredients of each batch. As you'll notice, I stirred the ingredients to encourage the slaking process. I poured the ingredients into a tall mixing container, and then used the hand blender to ensure a good mixture. The slips were thick, but I chose not to add any more water.
to make sure that all the ingredients were totally saturated, I left the slips to settle overnight. 24 hours later, I found that the slips were even thicker. I added two ounces of water to thin it down to a dipping consistency. I dedicated two stiff leather hard test tiles to each batch of slip. The first tile for just the slip with no glaze over it and the second tile designated for slip under clear glaze. Upon dipping, I noticed that in the crevices of the textures, there were some air pockets where the slip skipped over the clay. I used a brush and filled in each gap. I bisque fired these to cone 04. Notice how the crimsons got a little lighter. The ivy kept its brilliancy and the lavenders remained true. Interestingly, you can start to see the difference between the 10% slips and the 5% slips. I added the clear glaze to half the test tiles. I used Amico Mixing Clear Glaze C11. Mixing Clear is a stiff gloss zinc-free glaze that works well with most underglazes, so I wanted to see if it worked well with colored slips too. I fired the test tiles to cone 5 in an electric kiln. Here are the results. The 10% lavender stain came out noticeably darker than the 5% and I was wondering if the clear glaze would add to the intensity of the colors, but they stayed true under the C11. The 10% ivy stain is very robust, but not a lot different than the 5%. Now the addition of the clear glaze actually enhanced the colors of both tiles. The deep crimson faded in the high fire. Our particular experiment found that the deep crimson didn't keep its color in this slip. Not even the clear glaze saved it, but we got a pretty pink. If you like our videos, please like, share, and subscribe. See you next time in the studio.